All right, guys, do you have a car that you can't find parts for anymore? Do you have a scooter that doesn't have the parts you're looking for on it? Do you have a motorcycle that the parts are kind of getting old on? Well, I'm going to tell you guys some new, well, not new technology, but new to me, um, which is 3D printing to replacement parts for these like vehicles or other useful parts that you might want to, you know, look into 3D printing for. Um, so I have uh three reasons you might want to uh three print some stuff so one reason is it parts are hard to come by i have a nissan 240 and the parts are really expensive for what they are so there is some catalog of parts that people have made already that um you can swap parts out for like if they break you can you know download a file and just make it yourself uh, another reason is to make parts, you know, you can't have access to otherwise, like, um, you don't have velocity stacks you can buy in any size. I made this for my scooter here, or you could also do the same thing with your motorcycle or even your car you can make intakes for. Um, and you can also personalize it. That's another reason you can make it exactly how you want it to be. You can put your logo on stuff if you wanted to. Um, so I'm going to go show you guys uh, how I go about designing and making parts um, for my cars and such, like replacement parts. So the first thing you're going to want to think about when making some certain parts that you want is choosing a plastic. So with 3D printing, there is a few different plastics you can choose from. Well, more than a few. Probably hundreds if you count all the weird ones. But here we have PLA. So PLA is like kind of a go-to printing material um, it can be fragile at times um, but it is really strong for what it is and it's the cheapest material probably on the market so PLA is great for making test prints you know, make sure your stuff fits so PLA um, comes in all sorts of colors pretty much every color you can imagine and comes in different varieties like this one is carbon fiber filled so there's little strands of carbon fiber in it um, versus this is PLA plus this is more of your uh, strong PLA variety so you can make test parts that maybe need to encounter some sort of stress so that would be a good option for starting out the next material you might want to encounter with uh, printing is PETG so this material uh, I'll show you guys in this clip here is made for I used for making an uh, interior radio block off panel on my Nissan 240. So this could be good for interior uses. Uh, maybe if you live anywhere besides like uh, south of, you know, a certain area where it gets too hot. Um, so I live in Oregon and usually this stuff works fine for interior panels on cars. It doesn't warp too much. Um, so I have that radio block off plate printed in this. Uh, my printer does usually like this stuff. Um, but there is other options and there's many, many companies make it. It's almost as popular as PLA. So this is a great option. Another option you might consider are some of the more specialty materials that you might need a more expensive printer to use. So here we have ASA and then we have ABS. So ASA and ABS are very strong high temp materials, um, used for things you would, um, almost need metal for or very high use things like small clips that you know withstand vibration or uh, some shearing forces so asa and abs are great for that um and especially if you combine it with a um some mods on your printer such as an enclosure an enclosure would help with these drastically to the point where um it's almost hard to print without them after you start using the enclosure because they warp um, and then we'll make it go to my favorite material. So my favorite material to print with as of recent is called TPU. Um, so this is TPU. It's a flexible material. Um, it's very squishy, actually. You can get it in different hardnesses for different uses. So you can even get it, like, I don't know why they sell it, but you can get them glass-filled or carbon fiber-filled versions of this. So it's stiff. So it gets rid of all the properties of it being flexible. But here is something I have printed in that TPU. So here is my velocity stack for my scooter that I designed myself. And I'll show you guys how to do that uh, later in this video. 
Um, and this is the support for holding up that kind of lip, that you, like that trumpet lip you see. So this is all one layer thick. So you can see how squishy this stuff is. It just doesn't, you know, break. And it's very strong layer adhesion. I can't really pull it apart very well. Um, so this is a great option for pieces that might encounter some forces that could bend out of the way and doesn't have to be super strong for um, or super stiff. This is a great option for that. All right, and here's something I printed in TPU just to show on the extremes of how flexible this stuff is. It is so squishy. This is a, a growler cover I printed uh, with a certain end fill. It makes it squishy in all directions. Um, this is supposed to be on a glass growler, but you can see it's still super flexible. Like, look at that. You can't do that with any other filament. That's why I love TPU so much. So now after we went through all the materials we can print with, and now we gotta find, you know, what we're gonna print. So we have um, a multiple libraries on the internet of thing, like Thingiverse, um, Thangs, uh, a bunch of different other giant libraries with parts that are already designed and you just need to hit print really. Um, and these are wonderful resources if you uh, can't really design yourself or you have, you know, pretty, of uh, you know, common problem. Like there's all sorts of organizers and different parts for different cars, depending on what you have. But the more rare parts that you can need to like make, they're the more likely that they're not going to be on the internet and you have to design them yourself. So let me show you guys a couple things that I have designed or had to design myself in order for, um, cause I couldn't find them on the internet. So here's a velocity stack with a little bit more than a 90 degree curve. Then I designed this myself because the inner diameter doesn't fit my carb on other files. So I had to design this one myself and it's really not that hard. I'll show you guys how to do that later. And then here's another one I printed myself and designed myself is this ABS wheel for a cooler with a TPU outside. So it's kind of squishy on the outside and super solid and stiff on the inside. And I'll show you guys how I made this one as well. So another thing that here's one I have printed off the internet. So I believe this on Thingiverse, I could probably find the file for it, but this is just a guitar pick. Easy. This is printed in PLA, PLA plus super stiff. I have like, I don't know, 20 of these. And I just give them out to my buddies that play guitar. Um, so these are wonderful and they take, you know, a couple minutes to print anyways. So I always have those on standby. Um, but anyways, I'll show you guys how I go ahead and design these parts. Um, so you guys can too. So I use a program here called um, Onshape. And Onshape is free to sign up with. You just use your email and it's a browsing. Uh, I'm sure you've seen ads if you are familiar with any sort of 3D printing ads on uh, people's channels of using Onshape here. So Onshape is wonderful. It's mostly, it's the most familiar for a free program to any paid program. Uh, you have all the tools you'd ever really would want. Um, and here is my velocity stack that I printed right here. And I'll show you guys how I did that. So we just go over to the sketch first step here. And I just made a sketch on this front plane that was just a curve. Look, it's just two sets of spine curves. And then I went and rotated and extruded that and then added a bell mouth curve on the end of that. So literally took two drawings and I was able to make this shape here. It's really not that complicated. We can go into tutorials or how I would go about making this, because um, I did make this one, but I will show you guys other similar, uh, or how I made this one, the, the wheel. All right, guys, so I have the wheel assembly here. So this is basically what exactly that is there. So this has the tire on the wheel. And so these are two different pieces, obviously. Um, so we're gonna go to the first part here. This is the wheel. So here I have basically just took a cylinder, extended it up, and then cut away the the um, kind of the spokes there. So that's really not that hard. And I made the inner diameter of a, uh, a threaded rod. So I could just use a threaded rod as well. So it's really handy when you kind of know the dim dimensions for what you're trying to do. And then for the wheel or the tire, I just made a cylinder on the outside of it and then used the other tool to cut away. So this is really easy. Um, and it really didn't take that long. I think this probably took a couple days and you know, I'm not very familiar. I've only 
took in a couple design courses and really anyone could try to design anything. Um, but yeah, so Onshape is a great platform to use to even when you're getting learning because there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to use it. All right, so after you have your file that you want to print, you go ahead and you bring it and export it to something like Cura here. So Cura is a slicer. It basically turns your big pieces here into different layers because you can see the different layers, maybe not right now. You can see layers on 3D prints. So this takes everything and turns it into layers and we can actually scroll through the layers and see what everything looks like. So you see this grid infill here. Um, this basically is just space saving and save filament. Otherwise this would be solid and it would take forever and probably a couple of rolls of filament. So once you go through all your slicer settings, I mean, there's videos that you should probably watch on how to do that. It's really not super complicated and the presets are honestly just as fine. Uh, you go ahead and save that to a, di a disc and then you, uh, or an SD card, and then you bring it to your 3D printer and you can start printing. So once you bring it to your 3D printer, you just plug it in and then depending on the printer you have, you just hit whatever thing you want to print and it just squirts out the filament really. I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that, but in order to get just into the hobby of it, I'll just explain to you. This is my Creality uh, CR10 um, printing with PLA Plus, and I just printed this piece real quick. This is for my buddy's Miata. This is just a block off plate for his sun visor, and uh, it just printed similar to that right there. And uh, you can kind of see the end fill when I hold it up to the light. If you can focus, there we go. You see how it's like gridded and there's triangles in there. So that's kind of how it prints in layers and adds some strength to it. But I don't think we need to go super in depth with how the printer works because every printer is kind of different, especially the user interface right here. Um, Creality's are pretty much the same, but if you have like a Prusa or something like that, it would be different. And obviously the instructions once you get your printer are pretty, uh, pretty helpful. And I can't really tell you how much to how or how to use your printer more than the instructions already do. So before we go, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of the prints I've done that are actually on my vehicles right now. So here on my scooter here, my Honda Elite, I have that velocity stack that I printed and showed you guys earlier. That's just hose, uh, hose that's got a normal hose clamp on it and it's flexible. And this is connected to my carburetor so I can suck more air in because I have the upgraded uh, 70 kit instead of the 50 cc. And I'll show you guys on my 240 here, I gotta get around it. All right guys, so you see it. In my 240 here, here's the radio block off plate I was mentioning earlier. I have a hole right there so I can have my USB so I can tune it with my aftermarket uh, ECU. So this piece, I originally printed in PLA and it started warping. So this is why it is in PETG now, that yellow color I showed you. And just like that, I hope I sparked your uh, curiosity into 3D printing for replacement parts for your cars. Um, it's really not that hard if you just go through the steps of what plastic should I use, how do I model it, and then just exporting it using a slicer. It's more like testing and, uh, you know, the scientific method or whatever, but it's, it's a lot of uh, prototyping and uh, remodeling if you're just, you know, doing it as a hobby. It's, it doesn't have to be super in depth. It doesn't have to be, you know, stressing yourself out over modeling something because, uh, I mean, it's just plastic at the end of the day. Right. Um, so I hope you guys learned something. And, uh, if you guys want to learn some more about maybe modeling, I could try to make a tutorial or, uh, maybe on the printer specific itself. Um, just let me know and we can go more in depth with that, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, Leave me some suggestions in the comments on if you guys want to see anything else. So uh, this has been Restricted Garage, and uh, I hope I see you guys later.